uh, the beginning balance, which includes the outstanding items, which in our case are those two checks. Now note when I check that off, because those two things net out, my difference is at zero. So we could do that. I could say, okay, I'm just gonna, it's my difference is zero. I'm gonna move forward. Although it's not perfect to do that because I still don't really understand why I have 25,000 instead of 30,000 and why I, I have this 4,000 and 1,000 that has cleared. That's one problem. The second problem is that if these two amounts had not cleared, meaning if they were outstanding and they remain outstanding, they were outstanding in December, they remain outstanding through January, then you're not going to be able to do that method of simply uh, checking it off and be exactly in balance. So what we would like to do instead is really put these two on the books. We would like to put them on the books as of the date the check was written or possibly as of the date of the prior cutoff period like we did with the beginning balances uh, as of 12-31-23 in our case. So that's what, we'll, that's what we will do here. I'm gonna, I'm gonna say, let's put these on the books. So we'll go back on over and say, if this 25,000, I want to get to the same 25,000, but I want to represent it as 30,000 on the deposit here for my beginning balances and two checks of 5,000 so that I have my audit trail of the two checks that were written in the prior period. I can see that they cleared in the current period. And then if I want to go back to the prior accounting system, I can get more detail about those two checks. All right. So to do that, let's go ahead and leave here. So I'm going to say finish later. So I'm going to uncheck this for now. So it's so and then save for later. And then let's go back into my chart of accounts. And then in the chart of accounts, I'm going to go into the checking account and look at the good old register. And I'm going to imagine that I went back to my prior accounting system and looked up those two checks, which I'm going to enter as just basically expense forms, because I don't want to enter a check number. And let's, I'm going to put them in there as of 12, uh, 31 to 3 in our practice problem. You may want to put them in there as of the date the actual checks were written. But my thought would be I'm going to put them in there this way. And then if I have a question about those two checks, I can always go back to the prior accounting system and look them up. This is just to give me a, a note that this is coming from the prior accounting system. And I want to reference to the prior accounting system. So then I'm going to say the, uh, the uh, name I'm going to say is Epiphone. Now Epiphone is a vendor that we buy. And then I'll say this is a prior period uh, expense form. And so do, do, do. And then I'm going to say that this was for 4,000. Okay. And then Epiphone is who we buy inventory from. So you might think, well, I have to put that to inventory. But we're not going to put it to inventory because when I put the beginning balances on the books, uh, I already accounted for inventory as of the cutoff date of 1231. Inventory, we made it correct by doing our, our journal entry process. So what I want to do is just have a clearing account. All my balances are correct already. I'm just going to clear this out to the opening balance equity account, which is that generic account that QuickBooks makes up, right? So I'm going to put the two checks to opening balance equity, and then I'm going to make an adjustment to that 30,000. The other side also go into opening balance equity, which will net out opening balance equity back to zero is going to be the idea. All right, so let's get an idea of what that'll look like. We're going to say this is going to be a prior period adjustment checking account. The other side is going to go to opening balance equity. Let's save it. And then if I go to my balance sheet and run it, and we had an adjustment to the checking account and we had an adjustment we can see down here. So now there is a balance in the opening balance equity. I'm actually going to open up the general ledger report to see the detail that way. I'm going to go to the tab to the right, right click on it and duplicate it. And then I'm going to go to reports on the left hand side, close up the hamburger, go all the way down to the accounting reports, which are for my accountant open up the general ledger and then I will type in here the date of the transaction 123123 to 123123 and just see that activity. So in the checking account we have this expense form uh, for the 4000 and then in opening balance equity we had a transaction for opening balance equity do, 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 here 
of the 4,000 right there. All right, let's do the other one now. So I'm gonna do the second one. I'm gonna go back to the first tab. We're back in the register again. And let's select the drop down and do another expense form and say this one is as of 12, 31, 2, 3 as well. This is a prior period uh, expense form. And I'm gonna say this was for the 1,000. And I'm also gonna say the payee is Epiphone again, but I'm gonna put it once again to opening balance equity. So same transaction, opening balance equity. I'm gonna run that. And now if I take a quick look on the balance sheet and run that again, we should have in opening balance equity now the 5,000. So there's our 5,000 in opening balance equity. And then up top, we still we made a change to the checking account as well. So now what I'm gonna do, if I go back into my register and scroll up in the checking account, let's run this one again. Uh, we have our activity here. Now this 25,000 we put in the checking account, I'm gonna now change to 30,000 and the other side is still 